So then how do we know the order of the energy levels and the sublevels when you put it all together? Let's say we take a very big atom like mercury or even bigger, uranium. How do we go through all the different quantum numbers and get them correct? Well, there's a neat little trick. The one I recommend is the diagonal rule. I'm going to show you how to set it up and then we'll do one example together so you can see how it works. When using the orbital models, we always decrease the sublevel and increase the energy level. Well, that's the understanding. But an easier way to do that is we simply line out all the rows of the periodic table. So we have 1s, which has one sublevel. We have 2, energy level 2 has 2s, 2p. Energy level 3, 3s, 3p, 3d. Energy level 4 has four sublevels, and everybody has four from then on. 5, 6, and 7. Okay? We start with 1s. We always start with the lowest energy. And notice we draw a diagonal line here. And then once that's used up, we go back and we do 2s. Once that's used up, we go back and we do 2p, 3s. 3p, 4s. 3d, 4p, 5s. 4d, 5p, 6s. And so forth. This neat little diagram shows you the exact order that should be used to figure out the electron configuration. Okay, let's do that again real quickly. We have energy level one has one sublevel. Energy level two has two sublevels. Energy level three has three sublevels. Energy level four has four sublevels. Energy level five has five sublevels. And so forth, okay? So we would draw, we would start with 1s, and that's used up. So let's do an actual example of this. Let's use an example from the periodic table. Let's say that we have chromium, uh, 24 protons, therefore 24 electrons. The first two are going to go here, and then we've run out. So then we go to 2s. So we use 2s, and again, we use that up. Then we're going to go to 2p. 2p has three orbitals. See that? One, two, three. See the Huns rule? Four, five, six. Then we go 3s is next. Two go there. Then we go back up here. 3p is next. Okay. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. See Huns rule there? And we're running out of room, so I'm going to wrap it around. What's next is 4s, so I could, I'll put 4s down here. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I have four more electrons to go. So I need to come up here. 3d is next. 3 can have up to five orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are all 3d. And this gets a little trickier. These are called our transition elements because they're going to be changing. But again, we'll use Hund's rule, and, and that's what it would look like. So you've got the diagonal rule. We've used the Pauli exclusion principle to show that every single electron has four quantum numbers. You know, there's first energy level, first quantum number, second quantum number, the orbital's the third quantum number, the spin is the fourth. We've used Hund's rule to show that you can't double up until each orbital has at least one within the same sublevel. And we could put numbers in here if we wanted just to designate the number of electrons in each orbital. And then one, 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 one. 